Welcome to Faith Revival Honduras Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M. Jamez. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you, we cherish you. We thank you, Father, for your holiness, your goodness, and mercies upon our lives. Thank you, Father, for your judgment and love and the righteousness that you show through your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, for all these things. Father, I pray for people to get on fire with you and get right with you and have a good relationship with you, Father God. We thank you and praise you. Amen. So we're going to do some more of the book of Joshua. Joshua, Shimon, and Levi. Levi. Shimon and Levi. We're going to talk, uh, this is like part two. When uh, Dinah, their sister, younger sister, got um, molested and uh, by another guy in another village, and how they're going to the justice is going to be swift on those that did that to their sister. And where we're going to go is Joshua chapter 34, 22 through 70, 22 through 70 of 34 of Joshua. And Jacob, when heard these words, he was filled with wrath. And he was was uh, arrogant in, in, at them. And his anger was kindled against them. And Shabon and Levi swore and said, As Yahweh liveth, the God of the whole earth, by this time, Tomorrow there shall not be a remnant left in the whole city. And the twenty youth men had counseled themselves who were not circumcised. And these youth men fought against Shimon and Levi. And Shimon and Levi killed eighteen of them, and two fled from them, escaping to some uh, lime pits that were in the city. Shimon and Levi sought them out, but could not find them. And Shimon and Levi continued to go about in the city, and they killed all the people of the city at the edge of the sword, and they left none remaining. And there was a great uh, uh, concerning in the midst of the city. And the cry of the people of the city ascended to heaven, and all the women and the children cried aloud. And Shimon and Levi slew all the city, and left not a male remaining in the whole city. And they, they slew uh, Himar and uh, uh, Shechem, his son, at the edge of the sword. And they brought away their Dinah, and and the house of Shechem, and they went from there. And the sons of Jacob went and returned and came unto the, to the slain, and the spoils of all their property, which was in the city and in the field. Whereas they were talking, taking the spoils, and 300 men stood up and threw dust at them, and struck them with stone. When Shimon turned to them, and he slew them all with the edge of the sword. And Shimon turned before Levi and, and came into the city. And they took away their sheep and their oxen and their cat, cattle, and also remaining of the women and the little ones. And they led all them away. And and they opened the gate and went out and came unto their father Jacob with the victory. And, and then when Jacob saw all that they had done in the city and saw the spoils that they had took from them, Jacob was very angry at them. And Jacob said unto them, What is this that you have done to me? Behold, I was obtained rest amongst the Canaanites inhabits of the land, and none of them meddled with me. 
And now you have done to, to make me uh, to, to the inhabitants of the land against the Canaanites and the Pradites. And I am but a small number. And they will all assemble against me, slay me, when they hear of the work which your brothers. And I have now my household with me destroyed. And Shimon and Levi and all the other brothers with them answered their father and said unto him, Behold, we live in the land, and shall uh, uh, Shechem do this? To our sister, why aren't thou sullen at all the Shechem has done? And shall he deal with our sister as an harlot in the streets? And the number of women whom Shimon and Levi took and captured from the city of Shechem, whom they did not slay, 85 who had not no man. And amongst them was a youth, Danzo, a beautiful uh, appearance and well favored, whose name was uh, Bana. And Shimon took her as a wife, and the number of males which they took captured and did not slay was 47 men, and they rested and they slew. And all the youth men of, and the women that Shimon and Levi had take capture from the cities of Shechem were servants to the sons of Jacob and to their children after them until the day of the, of the sons of Jacob going forth from the land of Egypt. And when Shimon and Levi had gone forth from the city to youth men that were left who had concealed himself in the city and did not die amongst the people of the city rose up and these two youth men went into the city and walked about in it and found the city desoluted without men and only women weeping and these youth men cried out and said behold this is a uh, evil which the sons of, of Jacob the Hebrews uh, did to the city. And they're having this day destroy one of the Can Canaanite cities. And we're, we're not uh, afraid of their lives of all the land of the Canaanite. And these men left the city and went to the city of uh, uh, Tapnach. And they came there and told the inhabitants of Tenach all that had befell them and all that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem. And then in informing and uh, reached uh, uh, Jashbam, the king of Tenach. And he sent men to the city of Shechem to see those youth men for for the king did not believe them in the account of saying, How could two men lay waste such a large town as Shechem? And the messengers of uh, Jeshub came and back and told him, saying, We came unto the city, and it was destroyed. There is none a man there, only weeping women neither in any flock or cattle there. For all that was in the city, the sons of Jacob took away. And Jeshub uh, wondered at this, saying, How could two men do this thing to destroy such, such a large city, and not one man able to stand against them? For the, for the like has not been from the day of Nimrod, and not even from the remote times as a, a lichen taken place. And Jeshub the king of uh, Tabnach said to his people, Behold, uh, 
uh, be, be courage, and we will go fight against these Hebrews, and do unto them as they did unto our city, and we will avenge the cause of the people of the city. And uh, Jashub, the king of uh, Tabach, concealed with his counselors about this matter. And his advisors said unto him, Alone thou wilt not prevail over the Hebrews, for they much be powerful to do work to the, the whole city. And if two of them laid waste the whole city, and no, no one stood against them, surely if thou go against them, they will all raise against us and destroy us likewise. But if thou wilt send to all the kings of surrounding us and let them come together, then we will go with them to fight against the sons of Jacob. And will thou prevail against them? And hush, uh, uh, J Joshub the, heard the words of the, his counselors and the words of the pleased him and, it, and his people. And he did so, and uh, Jashub, the king of uh, Atabnach, sent to all the kings of the uh, Amorites that surrounded uh, uh, Shechem and Tashnach, saying, Go up with me and assemble with me, and we will smite Jacob the, the Hebrew and all his sons, destroying them from the earth. For thus did he do to the city of Shechem, and do not know of it. And all the kings of the Amorites heard of the evil that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem, and they were greatly astonished at them. And the seven kings of the Amorites assembled with all their armies, and the ten thousand men with drawn swords, and they came to fight against the sons of Jacob. And Jacob heard that the kings of Amorites had assembled to fight against his sons. And Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And Jacob assembled against, uh, uh, exclaimed against Shimon and Levi, saying, What is this act that you have done? And why have you injured me to bring against me all the children of the Canaanites to destroy me? In my house, for I was at rest, and even I have my my household, and you have done this thing to me, provoked the inhabitants of the land against me by your per processing. And Judah answered his father, saying, "Was was it for not my brothers uh, Shimon and Levi killed all the inhabitants of Shechem? Surely it was." Because Shechem had had uh, humbled our sister and transgressed and com the commandments of God to Noah, his his children, for Shechem to our sister away by force and committing adultery with her, and Shechem did all all this evil and not of of the inhabitants of the, his this land. And interfered with him, the same. Why thou, thou do this? Surely for this my brothers went and smote the city, and Yahweh delivered in into their hands, because it, it's in the habits of their transgressions, of the commandments of our God. It is then for uh, not that they have done all this, and now they are. Thou afraid of the distress, and they are through a displeasing of my brothers. And why is it thy um, anger kennel against them? Surely our God, who delivered into their hands the city of Shechem and its people, he will also deliver into the hands of all the Canaanites, of the kings who have come against us. And we will do unto them as my brothers did unto Shechem. And now he about them and cast away 
thy fear, but trust in Yahweh our God. Pray unto him to assist us in delivering us and delivering our enemies into our hands. And Judah called to one of his father's servants, Go now, see where those kings who's coming against us and situate with their armies. And the servant went and looked far off and went in the opposite of Mount uh, uh, Shahon and saw all the camps of the kings standing in the field. And he returned to Judah and said, Behold, the kings of the, uh, of the, are situated in the fields with all their camps and the people exceedingly number, like upon the, the sands of the seashore. And Judah said to, unto Shimon and Levi and unto his brothers, Strengthen yourself and be sons of, of victors, for Yahweh our God is with us. Emmanuel, Yahweh, Yahweh our God is with us. Do not fear them. Stand forth each man, gird your his weapons for war, his his bow and his sword, and we will go and fight against these uncircumcised men. And Yahweh is our God, and he will save us, and he roast up, and each gird his weapon of war, be in great and small, eleven sons of Jacob, and all the servants of Jacob with them, and all the servants of Isaac who were Isaac in Hebron, and came to them equipped in sword of war equipment. And the sons of Jacob and their servants, and behold, one of hundred and twenty men went to towards the king, and Jacob also went with them. And the sons of Jacob sent unto their father Isaac, the son of Abraham in Hebron. And the same is uh, Kurth Abar, saying, Pray, we beseech thee to us unto Yahweh our God, to protect us from the hands of Canaanites who are coming against us, and deliver them into our hands. And Isaac, the son of Abraham, prayed unto Yahweh for his sons. And he says, O Yahweh, our God, thou does uh, promise my father, saying, I will, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens. And thou didst also promise me and establish thou word. Now that the kings of Canaanites are coming against today to make war with the children because they committed no violence. Now therefore, O Yahweh of God, God of the whole earth, prevail, I pray thee, counsel of these kings, that they may not fight against my sons. Impress their hearts of these kings and their people with their territory of their sons and bring them bring the pride down that they may turn away from my sons and with thy strong hand stretched out arm delivering my sons and their servants from them the power and the might are in thy hands to do all these things and the sons of Jacob and their servants went towards these kings and trusted in Yahweh their God, which they were going. And Jacob and, and their father also prayed unto Yahweh. and says, O Yahweh, O God, powerful and exalted God, who has reigned from the days of old, from these still now and forever. Thou art he who striveth up war and cast them to to cease in the hands of the power of the might exalted and to bring down all my my prayers be accepted before thee and thou mayest turn to me with thy mercies and in, in, 
and press my heart to those kings that these people with their terror of their sons and terrify them and their camps and with a great kindness and deliver all those that trust in thee. For it is thou who uh, can bring people under us and reduce nations under our power. Amen. Praise God. So as you can see, Levi and Shimon took vengeance for 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 that city, molesting their their sister, their little sister, the only sister they have, and they they actually committed uh, not only adultery with their their little sister, but they also um, broke the commandments of God of that the seven Noahide laws that they they went by. Um, they they broke those laws, and even though they weren't they weren't um, part of them, they still break God's laws. And so those two things, and they went forth and they destroyed the city because they were on their filthy people. They went they 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 allowed their leader to do what they did instead of speaking out and saying you can't do this. This is breaking faith with these with our neighbors and and with uh with god's ways because they all knew god's laws okay but some of them chose not to go by god's laws and some decided yes the hebrews decided to go by god's laws but they the canaanites decided to go against god's laws because everybody had the laws of noah because everybody came from noah okay three sons and and all all of them came from them so they knew the Noahite laws. They are, and that's where Moshe knew them and followed them, and everybody else followed them. You know, because they're holy. God gave those laws to Noah. They're just called the Noahite laws because God gave them to Noah, and they passed. They were passed on to everybody else. You know, and so they did what was what they thought was best according to what the commandments of those seven commandments of, of Noah that was given by God. And they went by them, okay, and they broke faith with God by molesting their sister. Plus it was their sister. And God, God wants the brothers to stand up for their sister. And so now there's an uproar with the Canaanites and the next lesson we're going to see how God's going to give them victory naturally because they they prayed to God not once but twice. Amen. Jacob and Isaac, Jacob's father, they both prayed for their kids, pretty much. That and, and for the other camp to uh, to get rid of their pride and go home. But if they don't, they're gonna get hurt. They're gonna get destroyed because they're they're going in with uh, a thing that was breaking commandments of God. So therefore, if they go with that, them themselves will be breaking God's commandments too. Of 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 what He gave the seven laws He gave Noah, and if he, they break those things because because they're going along with what Shechem did, they will go down because they broke faith with God too. Instead of realizing, whoa, Shechem broke faith with God. They went their own way. They did, and they molested the, this uh, their their uh, sister. And they would go away, and they realize. But if they don't, and they they pr press on this, they deserve the same thing. Check them because they broke the laws of God. Everybody had those laws. It wasn't just for the Hebrews. It was for everybody on the earth. Everybody knew the Noahite laws. Noah laws. Just like everybody knows the Ten Commandments. Same deal. It wasn't just for the Hebrews, the Ten Commandments. It was for everybody on the earth. When God gives laws, when God gives regulation, God gives his love, he gives it to everybody. But he uses the people. If nobody else is going to be used, he's going to use what he what is yielded to him. Amen. And that time, the Hebrews were yielded to him. And so he made them his people. Amen. But all these things in the Bible are for everybody. And so 
if you're going to allow Satan to lie to you and say, oh, the Ten Commandments is not for me, well, that's the devil lying to you. Because the Ten Commandments, the, the Noah's laws, the Beatitudes, all things of the Bible for every tribe and heritage on this earth. We're all from the same race of being, from Adam, the race of Adam and Eve. Amen. But we have different tribes and heritage, but we're all from the same stock on the end of the day. Amen. And so we need to understand what they did was righteous. And Jacob was just worried about what what was going to occur? He knew. He's he's older. He's an old guy. He knows. He knows that these people are going to get stirred up about this. But they did the right thing. They prayed to God. Isaac and Jacob both prayed to God, and that's what we got to do when we're doing what's right. When we stand against what the world thinks is right, and we stand and say it's wrong because the Bible says it's wrong, and we stand against that when they want to kill the innocent babies, when they want to kill the elder, we, and we stand against that, and because we know what God's law says, it says murder is murder. And they're murdering the, the, the youth, and they murder the elderly, and we stand against that. And even if they all come out to war against all of us, and we stand up against us, we pray like Jacob and Isaac, Isaac did, God's going to give us the victory, and they're going to go down for their foolishness of breaking God's laws and breaking faith with God in the first place. Amen. So let's take that and modernize it in our time. Amen. Don't, don't let these filthy people in Hallwood and all these other politicians and nothing but bail worshippers. And I, I'd like to do a, a part two of, of what Elijah did. I take all these politicians to worship bail. I say, now you bail worship politicians, you try to send fire down with your false god. And now I'll, I'll dig a ditch and I you'll see some fire come down. But it'll just not come down in, in that ditch. It'll come down on you too. So come off your high horse, you politicians, because God's against your bail worship. That you're doing and all the things that you're doing secretly are going to come openly amen because god is against you politicians of Baal, because that's what you worship you don't worship god of the bible you worship Baal, you politician and you're going to go down just like they went down with with, with elijah a long time ago when they and i tell you what you better repent. You better get saved, you politician, because God got a deep place of hell waiting for all you. They kill these babies. They kill these elderly. And you think nothing of murdering other nations and your own people. It's You're going down for it because God's judgment is here against you. And I tell you what, those, those documents are going to be unsealed now. God is fully... And, Immersed and allowing those things to happen. So uh, there needs to be repentance in the White House right now. There needs to be repentance in every state house. There needs to be repentance in every place of authority because you have done wrong in God's sight and God is against you when you do that. You must follow God's laws. You must follow the laws that are, are, are taper taken from God's laws that are, are are agreeing with one another. Amen. Because I'm telling you, God is not going to have this anymore. He's not going to have this innocent bloodshed of the elderly and the young anymore. It's not going to happen anymore. And you're going to have to you're going to have to stand before the great judge why you murdered all these. And you're going to go to the deepest part of hell. Because God's got the deepest part of hell waiting for you, politician, waiting for you, Hallwood, waiting for you. And I tell you what, if you don't repent, it's it's you you got a place right in hell waiting for you. Unless you get saved, you politicians, unless you get saved, Hallwood, unless you get saved, news media, there's a place waiting for you in hell. Because you cannot serve Baal and Jesus Christ. You serve Baal and you know it. And you better stop it, you politician. Because God is going to reveal all this to the people. And the, what are the people going to do when they find out this is true? They're, gonna, they're not going to be happy. 
And I tell you what, you better get repenting you politicians because what you think you can get away with you cannot get away with because there's a god of creation and he's going to take care of this situation you're doing and i tell you what you're not going to like it because when you follow bail you get you get the you get the deepest part of hell but when you repent of these things, when you say, I'm tired of being this way, and you get give your heart to Jesus Christ right now, you politician. Get right with Yeshua HaMashiach, the, the, the God of creation right now. Because I'm telling you what, God's not going to have this anymore. All the things, the evil plans you're trying to do on the people are coming back on your own head, politicians. Mark my word. All the sickness and disease that you're allowing the scientists to let on the people are going to come back on your own head. And God's going to protect the people from all your foolishness. So you better stop being foolish and you better get saved, you politicians. You better get saved because the God of creation's had enough. And when he's had enough, you can make it right to the credit union that he's going to get you for what you've done. What you've done to the to the common people, what you've done to the youth, what you've done to the elderly, it's come back on you. I guarantee you. Because the judgment of God is on the Senate right now. The judgment of God is on the representatives right now. The judgment of God is on these governors that are wrong in God's sight. The judgment of God is on every state representative and senator as well as the, as the mayors. So you better all tremble and get right with the Creator and stop serving Bill. Because God's not going to have it anymore. What he's done before, he's going to do again. And meanwhile, the people of God need to start praying for these people. They come around like Isaac and, and Jacob did. They prayed. They prayed for the wicked to repent. They turn around and, and lose their pride and get right with God. We need to do the same. We need to pray for them to get right with God. Turn from their wicked ways and, and get saved. But if they don't do it, well, you know what? They did it themselves, didn't they? They deserve what's coming to them. Oh, too. So we need to keep praying for them. Amen. Now, those of you that would like to get saved, those of you politicians, Hollywood, news media, that would like to get saved, pray this prayer. People around the world would like to get saved. Pray this prayer. Be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave himself and spirit as a son. Represent where we used to be before Adam came and Eve came short of the glory of God. Amen. So pray this prayer and be saved. Dear God, Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior, my love. Love you very much, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. God loves you. Welcome to the family of God. Now, it's going to be hard at first because there's habits you, you have. But God's going to help you with them. He's going to break those habits. Some of you need to get broken of these habits, you know, especially if you're a politician. They just got saved. There's going to be habits that need to be broken right away. You need to follow God's word. God is the anchor that you need every day. When you go on the Senate floor or the representative floor or, or as a governor or wherever, whoever is listening, maybe even a, a foreign leader, God is going to guide you to do what's best for your people. But don't forget to ask the people what's going on. What's going on in your community? How can I be a servant to you? Because you know what? Before you're anything, you're a servant. Do you understand that, politician? You're to serve the community. Amen. You're supposed to do it with the reverency of God in your heart. And if you can't do that, well, you need to step down until you can and then run later. When you get your life straight okay but if you can do it right and you can get your life in the right order then stay in your position but if you can't get out of it until you get right and then then allow the yourself to get it, 
go through the elections again. But you need to be right with the people. You need to be right with God. God is, that's the two things. As a servant leader that you're supposed to be, not a politician. Politician, fly by night, don't be like that anymore. Be a servant to the people and to the, to the things of God. Amen. Now, there's things that you're going to do, you're going to need to do, that maybe some of the population that's in the world won't like, but you need to do it because it's the right thing to do. Amen. You hear me? So, keep doing what's right now. Do what's righteous. Read your word every day and be a servant leader now. And do what's good and for, 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 the, for the King of Glory, our God. Amen. For your fellow brothers and sisters that you serve. Amen. Let's end with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Hornets of brings peace that passes all understanding. Never sin, never broken. Complete peace of God. And, and I just want to remind you, First Amendment. This is not about freedom of speech. It's also the freedom of expression. Also, it's the freedom of assembling peacefully together. Also, it's the freedom of religion. And also, it's the freedom of 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 of, uh, of uh, the press now pr the freedom of press is everybody it's not elitist system that the corporate news media seems to want to always preach about which is not there everybody is freedom of press when when our founding fathers wrote freedom of press they were talking about everybody everybody has the right to give news to someone else like hey they're they're way over there they see a storm they tell someone else hey you know what this there's a potential storm going on or a solar flare or whatever or even other things everybody's freedom of press not just the feel amen so you got to understand that people you all are freedom of press you all have freedom of religion you all have um, of freedom of expression, freedom of assembling peacefully, and freedom of speech. Amen. Those five things are in the First Amendment. We all have those things. We're all created equal in God's sight, and we all have those uh, things. Amen. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of assembling together peacefully, uh, uh, freedom of, 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 of press, and freedom of religion. Amen. We all have those rights because we're endowed by our Creator with those rights, and they're just expressing what we already have through the First Amendment. But we already have them already from God. God can God gave them to every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth, and our founding fathers were just expressing what we already have, and our, through through the First Amendment. Amen. We all have that. We all must not be tricked out of what we are having from our Creator. Amen. We must always stand up for what is truth and good. Amen. God bless you. I, I want to see good things come out of these leaders of the world. I want you to be servant leaders now. I want you to do what's pleasing in God's sight because when you're pleasing in God's sight, you're, you're doing good. But when you are obstinate and you do what you want and you do what the evil spirits want, you're, there's a place in hell waiting for you. And that's really seriously the way it is. Because God puts a lot of, of more judgment on those that are in authority than he does someone that's not. And so we must be servants before anything else. We must serve God with all our hearts. And we must have the right thing for each individual. We must look at each individual, not just a crowd of people. They need our help as leaders of all sorts. We need to be leaders that serve the people for what God's truth is. And we need to serve the people what they need the most done. If there's roads that need to be fixed, fix them. If there's children that are on the streets that don't have a place to play, get one for them. If the elderly 
then help help them. That's simple. If the if people's houses are falling apart, get the community together to have loving hands to rebuild those houses. Whatever needs to be done, serve with all your heart and do what's right in God's sight. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holiness brings peace to pass his own understanding. Then they say, an unbroken, complete peace of God. Now go in peace of God through God's wholeness. Amen. The hope, the holy hope of glory upon your hearts. Amen. God bless you. Keep in the, in the ways of God. Never depart from them. Now let joy rise in your hearts, I pray. Amen. Shalom.